so they push the electrons. All perfect. They circulate here. They push electrons, everything perfect and up to here, and it comes out. They push and it comes out. Now, in the moments that I pass through zero, what happens in this continuous current is a push and a cut, a push and a cut, a push and a short. The cuts are short, but an electronic circuit in these cuts that are 100 per second would end up resetting this circuit 100 times per second because they are 100 or 120 depending on the frequency you have. How is this resolved? That's where a filter capacitor is placed. On this full wave rectification, on this full wave diode bridge. We call this area rectification. And this capacitor. Filtering. On this side we enter with a voltage like this, sinusoidal, alternating and at the output of this rectification we have this wave that if it goes to the other side we recover it, we take it to our side, then we have this. One hundred times per second we return to zero, but thanks to this last capacitor, what we do is the following, that return to zero no longer exists, and we maintain it. We can keep it, it doesn't go back to zero thanks to the capacitor function. As a result, we have a constant current, even continuous. That is the function of the last capacitor, to maintain the charge and when it reaches zero, to keep it above filtering it and to have a uniform and continuous current. In practice, I don't know if it has happened, but there are air conditioners that when we turn them on make the startup beep, that beep that we all know, but sometimes when we want to turn on what happens is that the equipment turns off. It restarts. Or maybe it restarts multiple times. It's like someone energizes it and will de-energize it again. Many times that problem is caused by a defect in the capacitor. The capacitors cannot be damped so this filtering is constant the voltage drops and the microprocessors reset. That's how it is in inverters, in conventional ones, in all electronic circuits, filter capacitors are fundamental. We are going to measure these capacitors and we are going to see how they are placed on the same plate. I'll show you below. For example, in this case, let's get a little closer Here we have the four diodes that are rectifying. And if we look, here we already have a negative side and a positive side. Notice that we have a negative side. Generally when converting direct current the thickest track is the light green one, thicker. As you can see there is copper here. They are conductors. Generally the thick track is the negative and the thinnest track is the positive. If we turn the plate over, we see that this is the case, and that this electrolytic capacitor has its negative side well marked, it is always the line side. Even on the board it is well marked, here for example with white, here is another capacitor, but I already removed it, this side is the negative side. Note that it is the thick side. This is well marked on the board, these capacitors cannot be flipped because capacitors are two metal strips or two bonded metal plates separated by an internal material that attracts electrons. In the case of these capacitors, they are a chemical that is prepared to receive electrons from one side and not from the other. If we put them upside down, they can explode. That's why they have a cut above. If they explode, they do not explode towards the plate, but rather they explode upwards and do not damage other components. With this I want to tell you that when you replace it, be very careful and do not place it upside down and whenever you work with electronics that work with eye protection, anything that jumps can hurt us.
try to have some glasses to work with electronics. They can scratch very quickly. So you always have to keep them in a place where they don't get scratched. These scratch very quickly. It is obvious that these elements cannot be made of glass for greater security and you have to take great care of them. We are going to see all this in a circuit, in a sample circuit and we are going to do, as I told you a moment ago, the measurement of the capacitors. To measure capacitors, we need a multimeter that has the ability to measure capacitors. In this case, this tester, notice that in the same position that we have used today, we have this symbol that is for capacitor. If we press the blue button, we go to diode, and if we press here again, we go to the beep function so that it sounds when there is continuity. And if we press again, we are reaching the capacitor position and it is always indicated with a letter F because the capacitance measurement of electrons is measured in farads. Now there is a residual capacitance of 10.5 nanofarads. It is negligible and it is from the multimeter. It is something to not pay attention to. Now we'll measure a capacitor. This capacitor that we have here in this sample circuit, it's 22 microfarads. Let's try. No matter the polarity, you can try one side and the other. We let it charge, and there we already have 21.13 microfarads. We are going to press the hold button of the multimeter, thus we save the data. These electronic components have a tolerance of plus or minus 10%. I mean, if it's 22 microfarads, we could have more than 10%, which would be 2.2 more or 2.2 less. It's a little less than 22, but it's in an acceptable range. Up to 20, 19 and a half could go and it would be fine and this capacitor is fine. This one is fine now. Another measurement that we do in the capacitors is to control their continuity, which precisely or does not have to have continuity or if it is within an already installed circuit, the continuity must be high, the resistance, as in this case of 10 mega ohms or 10 million ohms caused by other components in the surrounding circuit. With this I also show you that any measurement we make on the board can confuse you with other components that surround it. For example, we will measure this circuit. In this case, we are going to control the diodes and the capacitor. We are going to go to the diode. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect and perfect. For diodes in direct, we are going to test them in reverse. Note that it gives us data, but it is not the fault of the diode, it is the fault of the components that surround it. That's why it may also be that some measurements are a bit strange on the board, but believe me that little by little you will get used to it and you will realize what unusual measurements are worrying about and what unusual measurements are normal. Little by little, with so many measures that we are going to do, they will get used to it. Let's see this capacitor. We have a 1000 microfarad capacitor. We are going to wear down the tracks a bit. Let's remember that these plates are completely varnished and sometimes it is a bit difficult to make the measurements, but what we will do is scratch the tracks a little. Leave the copper in sight. Let's see. We leave the copper in sight and we can now make the measurements. We are measuring this capacitor, which are these same tracks or conductors. Let's measure the capacity and see what state this capacitor is in. We let it charge. We give it a moment, we hope it does. We keep waiting. and it marks OL, that is, it went out of range. Yes, 
The multimeter does not have the capacity to measure the capacity of this capacitor, but that is not true either, because this multimeter has the capacity to measure up to 200,000 microfarads, but it is 1,000, but it seems that a surrounding component sends us a bad reading and is indicating that it is out of range. In this case, we have two options. If we suspect that the problem is the capacitor, one option we can do is unsolder one of the two connectors, lift it, Later in the soldering class, we will see how to do it quickly. And what we do is measure with one of the connectors. It can be measured like this, if the measurement is strange or if they suspect that the problem is that. So far we understood what full wave rectification would be in an electronic board of any type. This process, an inverter technology is more delicate and fundamental. The difference with a normal electronic board and that of an inverter circuit is that the voltage that we are rectifying for a normal electronic board is only the DC current, which is used for its circuit processor to measure the temperature of the sensors and that alone. But in an inverter system, we have to do this rectification to feed fans and motors. For this reason, this same circuit is larger. And for this reason, in inverters you find large capacitors, those that are going to filter all that voltage that is going to feed the motors, and also the rectifier that tends to get pretty ruined, we are going to talk about that later.